So, you've got your book there, and I hope you have a ruler, or you can borrow from a friend. You'll actually need your ruler as a ruler today, not just as a straight edge. So in case you didn't know the difference between a ruler and a straight edge, a ruler can measure things. Here's the diagram I'd like you to create, but what I'd like you to do is actually try to make your diagram a little bit different to mine and a little bit different to the person next to you. This is what you need to include that's the same. One, two, three parallel lines. And then these two guys, AE and BF, both of which are not parallel and cut along the three parallel lines. Those are the transversals, okay? So what I'd like you to do is create the three parallel lines, have them some distance apart. Create, say that again. If they are parallel, then they will not cut across each other. No, but like, can I cross it in those three lines? Like, Which are you talking about? Can they, like, can you draw, like, in the area that we see, like, other than up at now, eventually, but can you cross them now? Like, oh, now, so, so long as they intersect with all three lines, yes. Um, though, I will point out, if you do make them cross somewhere in here, what we're going to demonstrate will be a bit harder. So I sort of more want you to vary like the proportions and which way these lines face, but it'll be easier and simpler if they don't, okay? Right, now once you've done that, here's what I want you to compare. And you're actually going to have to measure these things, do it as closely as you possibly can. What I want you to compare is the fraction AC over CE. So you're going to need to measure that little spot up there and this length over here, and then divide those. And then I'd also like you to measure and calculate BD over DF as accurately as you possibly can. Uh, you'll need a calculator, obviously, because you get some weird gnarly numbers. Go ahead and calculate those. And then I want you to compare them with the numbers of the person next to you once that person also has that done. I'll give you uh, two or three minutes to finish your drawing, do some measurements, and then catch up with me. Okay? question from a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't ask you. So, I actually don't know what to do with this. I brought in beta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you already have two variables. And I yeah. Sometimes you need to, sometimes you need to. I mean, generally, of course, we avoid it if we can, because often different spots within, <coughs> excuse me, the diagram can be described in terms of the variables you've already got. I should say pronumerals. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't, like there's a rule against it. Sometimes you just have no choice. I'm going to suggest to you though, you know exactly what the size of beta is. You don't need to give it a name. I want you to have a look at your diagram and particularly think about what kinds of shapes you've got there. You know more about this shape than you realize. Okay. Also, is, is E like floating around there or is it on the... No, it's, it's floating around in yeah. the middle. Okay, that's fine. So can you say, since that, um, how do you explain that it's 45 degrees? Oh, that it bisects the right angle. So, F-A-B, or you could say since I that I already learned that better. Don't, don't, don't give it a name if you don't need to. It's a number. You can work out what it is. So you'd say angle da 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 equals angle da 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 because... Like, and you, you tell me, what's the reason that they are equal to each other and then because they add up to 90, they're each 45. Okay. Has anyone got the numbers? Has anyone got their own numbers? Yeah? Have you compared with the person next to you yet? Get it as a decimal. Get it as a decimal. You got yours? What are your numbers? Yep, cool. You can do it in whatever you like.
Okay. Can I get a show of hands? Who's taken their measurements and has their ratios? Hands up straight. Hands up straight. I'm still looking for some hands. Okay, hands down. I've got about half of you. If you're not done yet, that's okay. You'll probably be able to, as I speak, get far enough into this that you can work out what on earth is happening here. Okay, Jake. So, I did this earlier. I, um, I marked it all out. I used a ruler, etc. Um, and I was measuring, I happen to be measuring in millimeters, but maybe you have centimeters or something else. Well, on this ruler here, I think you can go to the half millimeter, but I didn't have that much precision at my desk. When you do the comparison that I asked you to do, you should find that these numbers are eerily similar, right? Um, you'll notice, and I'm going to encourage you to do this if you haven't already, I put approximately equal to for both of these because you measured. Like you measure with a physical instrument. And there are always limitations on that. That's fine, but they're not exact. They're not precise. Okay. So what, what's going on here? Okay. The things that you've measured, each of these individual things, right? This length, this length, this length, this length. We call them intercepts. You've heard of the word intercepts before, but it's meant something else. It's meant a, a spot on a coordinate axis, right? That's why you've got an x-intercept and a y-intercept. So in that context, on a Cartesian plane, intercepts are points. But in this context, that means much less. So intercepts refer to these um, sections, I suppose, of these intervals or lines. Okay. So these things are intercepts. AE, which cuts across a parallel line, parallel lines, and BF, which also cut along these parallel lines, they're what we call the transversals. Maybe you want to label that as such. These guys here are the transversals, which literally means they cut across. You know, like transport gets you across from one place to another. So these are the transversals. These guys are the intercepts on the transversals. And so there's something going on here that's fishy. Can we prove what's going on? Can we actually deductively, using the geometric skills and techniques that we have access to, not just measure and say it looks pretty close, but actually conclusively, in all cases, not just the 25 that we just measured, actually prove it? Okay? We can. Here's the approach we're going to take. Grab your ruler again. And um, on the same diagram, we're going to add in a construction. Okay? The construction we're going to add in is a line that's parallel to AE that passes through B. Let me say that again. We're going to construct a line parallel to AE that passes through B. Okay? So I'm, I would write this, and this is going to be the, the proof that you'll have beside your diagram. I would write it like this. Construct. Remember, this new line I'm about to construct goes through B, so I'm going to call it B something. Um, it's not to do with these lines, so I'm going to call it P for point. So I'm going to construct BP such that BP is parallel to AE. Just a little minor point for you. When you have to make your own constructions on a diagram, when you draw that on your diagram, that's great, but you've got to say something like this. You can't just say construct BP because it's like, well, what's special about BP? What makes that an important feature on your own diagram? And it's this feature that it's parallel to an existing line. So if you haven't already, go ahead and draw that in. And let's also label it as such. Hmm. Okay. We have created a new uh, intercept over here. So I need another name for this. So let's call this Q, this guy down here, because they're clearly related to each other. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to get toward is a relationship between, uh, let's see here, BD, DF, and AC, CE, right? What I'm predicting is that these two are equal to each other. I don't know that that's the case just yet, right? I can't say that that's true. That should be my last line, not my first line. So therefore what I'm gonna put up here is that what I'm required to prove is that these two things are equal to each other. So that RTP just indicates, yeah, I know that I don't actually um, have this established yet. That's where I'm gonna try and head. Okay. 
Now let me pause for a moment. I'm gonna give you a clue and then I'm gonna ask you to work away at this a little bit on your own, okay? I want you to think about all the knowledge that you've been using over the last couple of weeks within geometry, okay? Particularly, have a look at the shape that we've constructed. What kind of knowledge might be helpful? And there's many valid answers. Any takers? Any takers? Say it again. There are gonna be some ratios that are gonna be really important. That makes sense because the thing we're trying to prove has to do with ratios. So, first things first, good. Um, ratios, where have we seen that most in recent times? What kind of shapes have we been working with that have ratios in them? Similar triangles is where we've been spending most of our time. Do you see some similar triangles? You, you can see them, right? We're gonna to need to prove that they are because they look like it, but this is a proof so we wanna show that that's the case. Is there any other important information that might be useful to you? Hmm. Eric. Properties of quadrilaterals. Properties of are going to be very important. So, three things. Number one, ratios. Number two, similar triangles. Number three, properties of quadrilaterals. Not going to tell you which ones, but they're somewhat obvious from the diagram, hopefully. There's three kind of um, hooks to hang your knowledge on. This is where we're going. Can you try and make a start? Any way you like, where are you gonna enter in? How are you gonna get to here? I'll give you about five minutes to get a head start on me and then I'll show you my solution. Off you go.